Yes, that's right. Welcome to the 2.30 Report, where we review the very worst of late-night TV. And uh, this week, we're having a look at late-night Christian shows. Now, uh, Channel 10 runs this stuff at four in the morning, so they need something pretty full-on to get your attention. And I'll tell you what, the Lord certainly does pride. Everybody. Glory to God. It's the Believer's Voice of Victor Broadcast, and we are blessed today. Now, that is Ken Copeland, and if you think he's hokey, you should check out his daughter, Kelly. Ladies, when you're doing laundry, if you're grouchy about it, are you doing laundry in the love of God? Because when you do laundry in the love of God, you can get a harvest. <laughs> Now, you may find this hard to believe, but Kelly actually makes more sense than her dad and his mate. The word, the Hebrew word yeah. translated thing yeah. is word. Is word. Right. Every thing mm -hmm. came out of the word, or the word, you back to seed again. Uh -huh. Words are things, or they're word things. So when I say words... I just release a thing, but you don't see the thing when I say it. You heard the thing before you saw the thing, because when I said the thing, it's heard before it's seen. Makes sense to me. As, as Kelly says. I'm telling you, when those two get together, the anointing flows. Well, something is certainly flowing, but I don't know if it's anointing. Okay, all right. Maybe they are a little confusing, but at least these guys know their way around the Bible. Where is that? Scripture where Samuel was talking and and he talked to him about answer him Eli. But one thing these Christian shows all have in common is that in the end they always hit you up for some cash. Now some do it in a pious spiritual way. As a special challenge, please prayerfully consider a gift of twelve hundred dollars or more. But not everyone is as prayerfully considered as those guys are. The master of the grab for cash would have to be this guy, our favourite, Mike Murdoch. A lady came up to me one night and she said, my ex-husband has not paid child support in 15 years. I said, sow a seed for $58 just as a covenant between you and God. I'm not trying to buy a miracle, that's absurd. But give God a seed of your faith, $58. <laughs> money at all. It's about planting seeds. And I tell you what, planting a seed in Mike's bank account really pays off. Less than 30 days, that ex-husband wrote her a check and mailed it for $65,000. Whoa, that's amazing. Yeah. Well, surely you can't expect that to happen every time. Expect a harvest. <laughs> expect it. Mm. Expect it. <laughs> Maybe you can, yeah. Okay, so it seems like all you've got to do is give Mike 58 bucks and all kinds of miracles are going to happen. That sounds like crap to me. No, that's no, not. Look, he even gave an ironclad guarantee. If what I have said about sowing and reaping is just for Mike Murdoch's personal gain, may a curse be on me in my ministry, and may my tongue cleave to the roof of my mouth. See, the man is prepared to cleave his own tongue, Julian. That's good enough for me. So I sent off my $58 to Mike. But amazingly, no miracles. Who would have thought? But the good news is that Mike has come up with an even more foolproof way of prompting miracles. God spoke to me and said, tell them about the miracle of the thousand dollar seed. Sounds great. Uh, I tell you what, if you believe that, Chaz, I have just the man for you, Benny Hinn. Now, Benny is one of those faith healers, right? And he uses all kinds of very strange techniques to heal people. There he goes. Benny cures arthritis, mm -hmm. asthma, cancer, pretty much anything except tone deafness. No other name but the name of the singer. Singer! But, you know, what you really learn from Benny is that the cure to every known illness is pushing people over. Mm. Look at that. It really does work. In fact, thanks to Benny, we're now healers too.
Do you believe God can heal you today? You do? Good. God is getting ready to give you two brand new legs. When I count to three, you're going to be healed. And you're going to be running all over this place. In how long you haven't run? How long it's been without you running? Four years. This is good. You stretch your hands towards her and I'm praying the Holy Spirit. If you've never seen a miracle, you are about to see one now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray over this. Pray, pray. I need people praying in the Holy Spirit. I need people praying. She has been ran in four years. New legs. One, two, three. We heal now. Run, come on. Run, run, run. Samson, he was once deemed a gifted and compassionate priest at a Connecticut Catholic parish. Now, he's accused of being part of a five-man meth ring, with a federal grand jury indicting him on six counts of possession with intent to distribute. This is 61-year-old Kevin Wallen. He used to be a man of the church, heading up a Connecticut parish. Now he's a man in jail. The Fed said they caught him red-handed, selling meth to an undercover cop several times back in September. This neighbor lives two doors down from St. Augustine's Parish in Bridgeport, Connecticut, where Wallen used to be a pastor. My wife, my brother-in-law's kids go there. I mean, I think it's disgusting. They should do something about it. Well, the feds did something about it and earlier this month arrested Wallen and four others for allegedly importing crystal meth from California so they could turn around and sell it. This comes a year and a half after Wallen resigned as pastor of the parish, citing health and personal issues. Diocese officials say they offered to help him at the time, but they did not suspect drugs. We at no time had any idea that he was struggling with this kind of issue. The diocese is asking the community for prayers for Wallen during the, quote, difficult days ahead of him. If convicted, the former priest faces 10 years to life in prison, along with a possible $2 million fine. Tamsin. Jesus is here tonight. He is. Jesus Christ is here tonight. So you're going to be talking to him. You're going to be talking to him. If he was standing in front of you, he'd say, what do you want? I want to receive my sight. I'd like my child to be healed. i got a dead baby. I want you to bring him back to life again. Whatever you need. And some that have sicknesses, you've been hurting, you've been aching, There's, you've got arthritis, you've got other things in your body that are wrong. And right now, in the name of Jesus... I want you to stand up and say, I receive my healing right now in Jesus' name. Right now, in Jesus' name, I receive it. I receive it. Thank you, Lord. All those around them, put your hand on them. Put your hand on them right now. You keep standing. Don't, don't. All right, put your hand on those that are standing. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now, speak to the Lord. Say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. By your stripes, I am healed. Oh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. 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 Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. What's happened, Penny? When you said the nose, I've not been able to smell for a long time. I mean, every once in a while I would catch a little whiff of coffee or something, but it's very rare. And when you said that, it's like I had a little congestion from allergies or something, but everything instantly cleared. And then I started, started smelling mint. <laughs> mint, is that what you said? And both nostrils. And I, I turned around to the girl next to me and I said, Do you smell mint? Is there mint anywhere? And she said, I have mint gum. 
I was going to say, I think you're chewing gum. And I, I even still right now feeling the, like the warmth of the mint, you know, when you smell it going up both nostrils. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? Fire on her, Lord God, let it come in Jesus' name. During the 1980s, I entered a world that I found filled with fantasy and rife with abuse, the world of faith healing. I developed a special interest in a television evangelist named Peter Popoff. God told me, he said, you smite that cancer with your fist. At the time, Popoff was pulling in nearly $4 million a year, healing people on his miracle crusades. You've got cancer of the stomach? Are you ready for God to burn that cancer out? Here it goes in the mighty... Devil, back off. Back off, devil! Ooh. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Do you really believe you're healed? Yes. Do you think your cancers are gone now? Yes, I believe that because God never lies and we stand in His word. Praise the Lord. I tell you, from now on, you're going to have a soul of victory in your heart. Amen. To his followers, Popoff seemed to have divine powers. As, is it Gould, Alice Gould? He knew their names. Stand up, Alice. As well as the afflictions they'd come to cure. God is touching that thyroid condition right now. God is touching your nerves right now. God is touching your eyes. Just lift up your hands, get ready, here it comes. He also knew the personal details of their lives. Your good news from Charles before everything is over. I'll tell you, he's going to be completely delivered because of your prayers, because of your faith. Here it comes, complete healing in Jesus. Ooh, mighty name right now, right now, right now. Amen. It's all right to praise the Lord. I suspected that Popoff's revelations were other than divine. The radio scanner we brought to the hall picked up a decidedly worldly source. Hello, Petey. Can you hear me? If you can't, you're in trouble. Popoff was being prompted by his wife through a wireless earpiece. John? Dearly, Johnson. She'd gotten her information from prayer cards filled out by the faithful before the show began. She's about to get rid of the walker. You want to get rid of this walker, sister? Oh, glory. How long have you been walking on that walk? About three years. Three years. She lives at 1627 10th Street. 1627 10th Street? Is that right? That's right. She has arthritis all over. Ooh, burning this arthritis right out of your body. Take a few steps just to make the devil mad. Hallelujah. That's it. Just move around a little bit. There she goes. Just walk with me. Oh, glory to God. She's not going to need that walker anymore. God's just putting new strength, new health. Burning that arthritis out of her body. Just keep going. Hallelujah. 